Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in today's episode, we're following up on a story from earlier this month regarding the town of Westlock's flagpole and crosswalk bylaw. In a closely contested vote Thursday night, residents of the town of Westlock opted to pass the proposed crosswalk and flagpole bylaw. With a narrow margin of 663 votes in favor to 639 votes against, the decision mandates the removal of the Pride Crosswalk painted earlier in June and ceases the practice of flying the Pride flag and all other non-municipal, federal, and provincial flags on town-owned properties. The plebiscite held on February 22nd emerged from a resident-led petition presented to the town council in October of 2023. Under the Provincial Municipal Government Act, Westlock Council had obliged to either adopt the crosswalk and flagpole bylaw or refer it to a binding community vote. Now, we caught up with Westlock Mayor John Kramer, who was against the adoption of the proposed bylaw the morning after the vote to discuss the vote and the path forward. This is Municipal Affairs. Mayor Kramer, thank you so much for sitting down with us again. We are recording this a day after the Westlock citizens went to the polls and voted on the proposed crosswalk and flagpole bylaw. Uh, as someone who came out against the proposed bylaw, your initial reactions the day after the vote with it coming back saying, yes, we want the proposed neutrality crosswalk and flagpole bylaw. been thinking about this one a lot right but i guess that the best way i can frame it is to say that you know as a council we're we're deeply disappointed but not discouraged right um as far as the disappointed goes you know we put a lot of effort into communicating to our community that this this was a bad bylaw right we make data-driven decisions and there's no data to say um we should have gone down this road um, and we also put a lot of effort into trying to educate our community about the benefits of inclusion, the importance of inclusion. And so the disappointment is really real today, um, but not discouraged. Like we, we firmly still believe that Westlock is a kind and caring community. Um, but, you know, this is proof that change is hard for people. It's, it's difficult. And so as elected officials, our, our main job, I guess you could say, is it's roads, it's making sure the toilets flush, there's water in the taps, but but it's also about helping the community work through challenges like this while still holding space for one another. And, and man, this is tough. This is tough. But the promise I've made to everybody is having this bylaw on our books does not affect our council's commitment to inclusion in any way, shape, or form. So I, will, I want to talk about that for a second, if you don't mind. Um, reaction came in swift on social media the, the night of the vote. And I have to ask, do you, does this put a sort of a black mark on Westlock for being an inclusive community where people of the people in the LGBT, LGBTQ community may not feel like they're welcome in Westlock anymore? Um, and you know, like, it's a good point because that's the main risk that we communicated to the community that passing a bylaw like this is, it's toxic, right? Um, for the business community, anytime you go to hire somebody, the first thing you do is you Google them. And that tells you 90% of whether you're in or out. And uh, and this will be how we are Google for a little while. Um, but the thing I'll point out to folks is that, uh, you know, this isn't the end of the story by any means. It's, it's part way through the chapter book. And so we know that, inclusion is often not a straight shot. I was talking with a few of the students from the GSA yesterday, um, and it, it's very similar to what it looks like when they came out to their family for the first time, right? Immediately, uh, some people rally with support. Um, immediately, others push back and create distance because it's it's tough. It's a tough process. But um, as an elected official, you know what you were. We're in this for the long game. And... Uh, this wasn't a surprise in some ways. We, we knew this result was a surprise, but we knew at the end of the day, we have work to do as far as helping our community understand inclusion. And then also um, making sure those outside the community understand that uh, inclusion is non-negotiable. It's the future, right? And so um, hard work ahead, but, but not discouraged at all with, uh, 
where we're landed, especially because we know that the students in our GSA know that the adults in the room are still the adults in the room and they're, they're going to be taken care of. One thing I noticed after the results came out publicly was this was a very split decision. 24 votes divided the community, whether this was going to be approved or un, uh, passed. Uh, does that give you hope that uh, the community, while they came out against it, it is sort of a not a one lopsided side coming out in favor of this bylaw. It is a divided community that you have around this issue. Yeah, and you know, some of that even stems back to the understanding. I know when, when the crosswalk was first, first painted, some folks said, wow, you're creating division. But my, my argument has always been that pride crosswalks don't create division. All they do is reveal what has already been underneath the surface, right? And so when you look at the numbers, it's it's what's been brought to light. But I think a lot of the students have been encouraged, and myself has been encouraged in that throughout the past year, once things are in the light, you can deal with them, right? And I think that number of voters that yesterday is much higher than you would have seen a year ago. And so, um, again, disappointed, but not discouraged. Now, one of the main things that the community will have to do is start the removal process of the Pride Crosswalk that is outside of the town hall across to the Legion. Uh, I, I know it's still early days, but I'm assuming this will be on the agenda for the next town council meeting, correct? Yeah, so as far as legislation goes, I think of 30 days to um, put this, again, resident-driven, resident-voted-on bylaw on the books. And so that'll happen early March. Um, and then as far as the removal goes, that would probably tie into when it's time to be repainted, dollar crosswalks are repainted every year. Um, so probably sometime in June, July. My last question, because you did just mention it briefly there for a second, but this was a community-led plebiscite. Uh, there have been mentions outside of Alberta that this was the decision of the council to go to a plebiscite on a vote of this matter, but this was a government-mandated, province-mandated plebiscite because it was a community-led initiative, right? Yeah, and that's some of the challenge along the way too, right? As as elected officials, again, we every decision we make, we try to do data driven decision making, and a hundred percent of the data again says this is a bad bylaw, right? Federally, provincially, our municipal neighbors all use public infrastructure to promote diversity and inclusion. It's it's a common practice, and when you look at the other side of the coin, the only municipality that I'm aware of that actually had a bylaw like this on the books is out in Norwich, Ontario, and their council approved it. It was council driven and they repealed it three weeks ago because it was terrible. Um, so we've made this very clear to our community that it's, it's a bad bylaw. And uh, as a council, we've got to deal with it, but we are not going to own this. Um, but we hope again that uh, as the process goes on, um, hopefully our community will find a way to support inclusion and also that uh, the province takes note of this too. Um, you know, mus municipalities exist because the province allows us to. This bylaw exists because the province will allow it to. And so uh, we've had conversations with municipal repairs all throughout this. And so we, we hope they take notice. Before I let you go, I have one last question because there's probably a lot of things going through your head right now, and we are less than 24 hours after the vote has subsided. What What's the path for it for you now? You are just a newly elected mayor. This is the first thing that the may, first major initiative that uh, your sort of tenure as mayor is sort of dealing with. What do you do now as mayor to ensure that everyone feels welcome, even if it is the LGBTQ community, the uh, the Aboriginal communities in surrounding areas, what do you need to do as mayor to ensure that your community doesn't go away from this looking like something that it's not? Yeah, you know, I I keep reminding myself often, and I will throughout the day, I, I signed up for this. Um, none of this has been a surprise. And uh, I signed up for it because I thought it was the best individual in the community to to take this on um, and so again we know it's a long game but uh, as all elected officials we care deeply about our communities and we 
we sign up to do this because we think we can move the needle in the right direction. And so, um, again, disappointed, but not discouraged, right? We know the work that's ahead of us. We know that some of it is difficult, um, but we know that there's tried and true methods for um, making people feel safe in your community and have a sense of belonging. And uh, that's a big part of the job, aside from making sure the toilets flush and the water flows, right? Um, so it's always a bit of both, but uh, this isn't off the desk by any means, right? We'll, we'll keep plugging away and uh, we're confident our town will be seen as a kind and caring community that it is. I, I said that was going to be the last question, but I do have one follow-up. I, I know mayors and councillors from across Alberta and across Canada have been reacting to the news of what happened last night. Have you heard from any of your fellow mayors in the surrounding communities or even across Alberta to offer support or sort of give you some a pickup that you might need today after the vote? Absolutely. Yeah, there's been phone calls and, and messages pouring in, right? Because again, we're we're all connected, right? We're all connected as municipalities. And so um, every once in a while we compete, whether it's for physicians or things like that, right? But for the most part, we know that um, when one municipality is struggling or working through something, we we push support that way because the support comes right back to us. So um, yes, thanks, I guess, to, to everybody who's reached out and happy to connect. And um, again, disappointed, but not discouraged. We, we know the path forward here and, and we're gonna be all right. Mayor Kramer, thank you so much for always sitting down with me and chatting. Um, it's a tough loss, and I can imagine you are looking at the future with somewhat of a different perspective, but I, I think that you will be better off and you will make sure that the community gets through this sort of challenging time. So thank you so much for sitting down with me. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and even our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy over the last few years. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.